Welcome to Spotlight, featuring conversations with famous personalities from around the world. I'm your host, Eric Chase. Today's conversation is with Dr. James H. Will, world-renowned psychologist and management consultant to many of the major corporations and organizations worldwide. He has frequently appeared on national television and talk radio and is often referenced in the press. He is the author of the best-selling book, The Power of Self-Talk, 15 Days to Change Your Life. Our guest interviewer today is film and television personality, Deborah Winters. Ms. Winters starred in such films as the Academy Award production, Koch, with Walter Matthau, Class of 44 with Gary Grimes, The Winds of War with Robert Mitchum, and The People Next Door with Eli Wallach, Hal Holbrook, and Julie Harris. She recently starred in the television miniseries World in Crisis, co-starring Hugh O'Brien, Dick Van Patten, and Richard Roundtree. And now, Spotlight is pleased to welcome Ms. Winters and Dr. Jim Will to our program. In the studio with me today is Dr. James Will, author of the best-selling book, The Power of Self-Talk, 15 Days to Change Your Life. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Deborah. You know, it's very interesting listening to you, Dr. Will, but... When you first start working on changing your self-talk, should you focus on one or two areas of your life, the most troublesome one, the the easier one, or maybe focus on them all at once? Well, that's a good question, Deborah. Um, I was in Nagasaki, Japan, doing some work for a, uh, a cruise line down there. Mm-hmm. And this young man heard me the day or two before and talking about self-talk, and I saw him on the deck. and. I greeted him, and I said, hi, how are you? And he said, fine. I said, what have you been doing? And he said, I've been listening to myself talk. (laughs) And I thought, you know, that's very good. And I think that's what we really want to help people to understand is, first of all, start to develop that awareness of it's okay to talk to ourselves, and we're going to continue to talk to ourselves. Now then, what am I saying to myself? And as you start to develop that awareness, then you're hopefully you're going to start to say, oh my goodness, I didn't realize that I was so negative with my self-talk when I was about to discipline my children, or when I was about to make that uh, sales call, or make a presentation, or when I'm out on the golf course. So you start to develop an awareness, and then you start to realize, oh goodness, the, this is an area that I could actually change in. Well, then would it be helpful to write down your prevailing negative self-talk, I mean, along with possibly contrary positive statements? If you wanted to write things down in the negative, that's okay. And what I recommend to people that want to do that is after you've written down the negative self-talk, and I'm not necessarily recommending that, but if you feel that that would help you, then go ahead and and remember your grocery store list that we talked about in the book. Mm -hmm. You don't go to a grocery store with a list of things that you don't want, but it's okay if you wanted to go ahead and make out that list of things that you don't want at the grocery store or the negative self-talk, but then flip that over and start thinking about what it is that you do want. And I think what's very important is once you've rewritten that with the the self-talk or the goals or the concepts or thoughts that you want to have happen, then go back to the negative ones and shred them. Get rid Mm -hmm. of those. We don't Mm -hmm. need to look at them anymore. I've been thinking about this a lot. I've been concerned a little bit. What what does a person do to improve their self-talk if they're in an environment that reinforces this negative self-talk all the time? Well, Uh, You're flashing me back many years ago when I first came across these thoughts and concepts on self-talk. I didn't realize that I had gotten into an environment with my buddies, my friends, on the proverbial sofa. uh, And we used to be sarcastic. We ridiculed each other. We put each other down. It was so negative, and I had gotten accustomed to it, and I didn't know I had gotten accustomed to that. And All of a sudden, I started to realize, wait a second, this is not the world I want to live in. And once I started to decide, no longer am I going to be involved in this kind of activity, then all of a sudden, it was like getting yourself out of a Dempsey dumpster. And once you get out of that Dempsey dumpster, you know, you don't want to get back in it. So if you're around other people, you might have to decide to leave them. Now, if you're married to uh, somebody like that, I'm not saying to, to leave them, but my goodness, make sure that you offer this information 
to them and say, look, I found something that can be helpful. It's, I'm finding it very helpful to me. I think it might be helpful to us, to our relationship, to our children. And if you do have children, make sure that they're not putting themselves down, putting each other down, brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. And, and the schools, a lot of times, they're, they're doing that. And we just don't need it. We can't afford it. Life's too precious. Well, so then, Dr. Will, it's okay to enlist the help from family or close friends or rather than just working by yourself. I suppose, though, if you were in a negative environment, it might be best to work by yourself on these things. Well, it's a good point. You really do need, I certainly need help from my wife, from my family, from mm-hmm. my parents, from people that are important and, and around me. And we, as you start to share this with each other, you can certainly coach and support each other. And if they don't want to support you, then you know you've got to have some serious conversations with them. Uh, whenever we we're goal setting, and again in the image analysis workbook, we we're talking about how we can set our goals. You got to be very careful who you share those goals with. I recommend that you don't show them to hardly anybody unless you really do trust those people, because there can be some people that will say, "Hey, you know, I knew you ten years ago. I knew you back in high school, grade school. You know, who are you to think that you could ever accomplish that?" And they may try to steal your goals, your dreams away from you. You know what happens though if you don't accomplish your goals as soon as you would like to. The beautiful thing about this is that there's no. It isn't like a football game or a basketball game. Uh, There's no time restraint. Uh, There's not the end until you finally do pass on. But until that moment, you know, you can continue to set your goals. And if you do um, not live up to them or, or fall short of those goals, then what you can do is you can just be nice to yourself and start to say, wait a second, okay, I'm trying. I'm really, really trying. And yet I messed up. I, I slipped back. I I didn't do it the way I wanted to. But, you know, nobody's saying that it's the end of the game. So please be nice to yourself and say, all right, the next time, that phrase, the next time will help us tremendously. And we let go of the mistake. And instead of harping on it, instead of bringing it up and saying, see, that's how you've always been. And and that that is that type of criticism is very, very harmful to us. Well, what happens, Dr. Will, if you repeatedly try to accomplish certain changes in your life, but you have trouble getting over certain hurdles which detain you? I mean, you, you talked about that a little bit just now, but I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about these, these hurdles and, and things that stop us from making any progress. What, what can we really do? Well, I think it, you need to be real honest with yourself and say, do I really want to change this attitude or this habit? Do I really want to change this particular behavior? Do I feel like, well, i got to do it? Then that got to is going to cause some stress and anxiety. But if you decide, yes, I am the old saying, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. (laughs) If you're sick and tired of that old behavior, then all of a sudden, I think it's kind of good to have a conversation with yourself and say, you know, okay, Jim Will, do you really want to change? Or is it just lip service? Are you committed to that change? And what are you going to do about it? Again, I, I want people to really pay close attention to the image analysis workbook. And if they will do everything that I've written in there and will go step by step and evaluate each and every goal, they're going to have a real good feeling as to whether or not they're committed to that goal and then how they're going to accomplish those goals as well. You use the word committed a lot in in all of you know your books. And, and I'm just wondering, is being committed really that important? <laughs> I think it is. I really do. Uh, reminds me of the old story that the uh, the difference between the the pig and the chicken. You know, the the, the pig <laughs> yeah. is totally committed, and yet uh, what's important in the commitment is you deciding that is really what I want. And and if, as long as it's good for you and for other people. If it's a selfish goal, I'm not recommending that. But if it's a goal that is benefiting you and the people around you, then I think you've got to be committed. Otherwise, you may fall into it. But I think I just feel that the commitment is so very, very important. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder, 
can I really get somebody that's close to me to change? Or is this commitment really in regards to myself? Well, a couple of things. It's a very good question. Um, can we really change somebody else? If we're a parent, we can probably change <laughs> our children with threats. Yes, <laughs> fear. Fear, yes. If we're a boss or an owner or a manager, we can maybe change people's behavior there. Uh, however, what we'll really recognize is that I can't really change you. I can't change a lot of people out there in my world. But what I can do is I can change Jim Will. And as I change Jim Will, and again, back in the image analysis workbook, how do we want to be seen? How do I want to be seen? And it's amazing that as I change habits and attitudes and characteristics of Jim Will, then guess what? People around me start to change the way that they see Jim Will. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. You know, all of all of this information that you've relayed to us in the books and the program, it causes me to think that I could really use this in every aspect of my life. I mean, Dr. Will, what have you noticed specifically about happy and successful people that you could tell me about? Well, Deborah, that's another very good and astute observation. Um, yes, I totally encourage all of us to use this in all aspects of our life, uh, starting with our spiritual aspect of living, to our relationships at home, on the job, everything, our sports, our recreational, uh, literally every aspect. And what I have noticed with high performance and happy individuals is that um, the really happy ones are using it in all their in all areas of their life. There's a lot of people that are very, very successful in one arena of their life, and they're using this information consciously or subconsciously, mm -hmm. usually subconsciously. And But what I would encourage is that we could use it in all areas and be balanced. If we're balanced, then I think we're really going to be happy, successful, and enjoy the maximum out of life. You know, I'm wondering if we couldn't use this self-talk with our children. In other words, saying things to our children that could later become their own self-talk. Oh, gosh, yes, Deborah. That's, I think, one of the greatest gifts you could give your children, to give those people that you love. You're around them. You see and hear what they're saying when they come home from school. Gee, I'm stupid. I'm dumb. Nobody mm -hmm. likes me. I'm ugly. Look at me. Mm -hmm. And you just stop them and say, wait a second. No. No, that is not. That is not correct. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a very beautiful person. You're a very handsome person. I love you. I'm very proud of you. And you watch that young person start to blossom. Mm -hmm. And we all need it, no matter what age. <laughs> Um, there's some people that, that resist this change so much, even when the change could be totally helpful to them. Why is that? Why would they do that? Isn't that nuts? <laughs> I, I think so, yes. <laughs> and and I, I know it all too well, I guess. Um, it is. It's sad that even when we know that it could help us and benefit us, sometimes we still resist it. And I don't think that we really have to go into a lot of deep analysis and ask ourselves, well, why am I doing it? Simply say, do I want to do that? And no, I don't want to. Am I sure that I don't want to procrastinate on that anymore, keep myself from benefiting from happiness anymore? Okay, what we've just touched on here, Deborah, is you start to goal set in everything that you do. A lot of times people think, well, I'm going to goal set for a new car. I'm going to goal set for uh, to wait, lose five pounds. I'm going to goal set to increase my salary by $500 a week. But really, you start to goal set on everything that you do. You goal set as to how do you want to handle the rejection? How do you want to handle the hurdles? How do you want to handle the setbacks? How do you want to handle, if you've been resisting this change, even though it would be good for you, goal set as to how you want to handle that situation the next time. Does that make sense? Yes, you know, and it also in this workbook, it would be very important, I would think, to write all of these goals down, not just tell yourself in your head. I see the control room is signaling me, Dr. Will. We have to go pay some bills, so we'll be right back. And now, a word from our sponsor.
We now return to Spotlight, featuring conversations with well-known personalities from around the globe. Today, our guest interviewer, film and television star Deborah Winters, talks with Dr. James H. Will, well-known consultant and author of the best-selling book, The Power of Self-Talk, 15 Days to Change Your Life. And now, here's Deborah Winters. In the studio with me today is Dr. James Will, author of the best-selling book, The Power of Self-Talk, 15 Days to Change Your Life. You know, Dr. Will, you make it sound so easy. Um, I've noticed on the your book it says 15 Days to Change Your Life, and I'm just wondering, can I... Can the listeners, can we really change our life in 15 days? Most definitely. And I've seen it hundreds, if not thousands of times. Individuals have written me, have emailed me, have called me, have come up to me even after 15, 20, 30 minutes of a presentation that I've given and told me examples of how it's changed their life in less than 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, is it going to change your life if you weigh 450 pounds and you want to get down to 195 pounds, is that going to is that going to take place in 15 days? I don't think so. But you know, as we were talking about it earlier, it's a journey, and and that's the beginning of that journey. And if you will go ahead and in 15 days you can start to see yourself progress towards the end result, towards the big goal that you might have, and that in itself is changing your life. You know, in the course of a person's day, they're, they're inundated with all kinds of things hitting them, coming at them. How would you recommend, Dr. Will, somebody to go through their day from morning till night? Great question, Deborah. Um, let's just think about this for a moment. What do a lot of people do the first thing they do when they wake up in the morning? They will turn on the television and start watching the local or national news. <laughs> yes. um, I, I do. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I love our friends at the networks, but at the same time, we've got to start to be very careful what we're allowing into our world, into our minds, into what we're uh, becoming very, very conscious of. And especially, a lot of times, the local news, it shows accidents, suicides, murders, <laughs> all the things that are really... Do you really want to start your day off with that kind of information? Have you gotten so used to it that it's now going to be like a heroin addict taking that away from them, mm. you know? And as the world continues to throb, as the world continues to moan, do we really want to be a part of that? Or what I would recommend, back to your question, mm -hmm. is deliberately wake up and deliberately start to ask ourselves, what kind of a day do I want it to be? And then go to your image analysis workbook and review your goals. Start out, and, and you could even take a lot of your goals and put them on a CD or a cassette tape. Record yourself so that you could be listening to it while you're shaving, while you're in the shower, while you're in the uh, car going to work. You could plug it in. Mm -hmm. So the more, the bottom line to what you just asked is the more that we can saturate ourselves with the goals and the aspirations that we so dearly want and desire, and, and if we can exclude all the negative things, and that includes the radio, you know, what songs what television programs do you watch? Who are you hanging around with around the coffee bar? Mm -hmm. You know, who do you hang around with at lunch? Who mm -hmm. do you go associate with after after work? Mm -hmm. What kind of groups and organizations do you belong to? Do you network with the good, healthy people that are goal oriented, or are you networking with people that are still on their sofas? You know, the ones that I talked about earlier. <laughs> Sometimes it's it's really scary to make change. Um, do you have any further advice on how we can embrace change? You know, Deborah, uh, the reason I'm smiling, of course, the, the audience doesn't see this, but I think they can hear it in my voice. <laughs> I was coming back with a client in St. Louis. Uh, we were flying back. And the, my client, he said to me, he said, Jim, this stuff is scary. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, yeah, but you're going to love it. You're going to love it. And yes, you know, we've gotten so accustomed to our old levels of comfort and what we've gotten accustomed to and used to that all of a sudden we're, we're going into a new arena, a new world. And it can be scary, but what are the choices? All right, if you don't change, what's going to happen this time next week? What's going to happen this time next month or next year or five years from now? So you've got a choice and you don't have to change. 
okay? If you don't want to, but why would you cheat yourself? Why would you take happiness away from you and your family? Don't you deserve it? Don't we all deserve happiness in our life? Don't we all deserve to have prosperity in our life? Don't we all deserve to have health, good health for our lives? And who's told us to get used to certain things? You know, Carlton Fisk, the great, he's a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. He told me, he came up to me after a 30-minute program, and he said, Dr. Will, you just taught me something that I don't have to believe anymore. And I said, what was that? He said, when I was growing up playing Little League Baseball, his Little League baseball coach, with all the best of intentions, told him if he got into a batting slump, he would be in that batting slump 14 to 16 at bats. <laughs> and here he had already won the World Series and was nominated into the Hall of Fame. And yet that self-talk had been mm. going with him all these years, had been traveling with him. Yes. And so what he told me is that he didn't have to believe that anymore. So what are some of the beliefs and the attitudes that you and I have had and have been taught by well-intentioned coaches, parents, spouses, teachers, all kinds of people? And do we want to believe that anymore? And when? how much longer do we want to drag that with us? Yeah. Do, you know, so is it scary? It can be scary, but you, here's another example of goal setting. Do you want it to be scary? Well, yeah, Jim, I want this changing stuff to be scary. Okay, guess what? It's going to be scary. <laughs> it will be scary. But do you start to see what I'm talking about? You start to goal set on everything. You say, but do I want the change process to be scary? No, I don't want it. Then what do I want? I want it to be fun, exciting. I want it to be new. I want to embrace it. I want to have the energy and, and the enthusiasm to accept it quickly and easily. Experts have said in order to change a habit or an attitude, it's going to take, what, 21 days, 15 days, all kinds of experts. Mm -hmm. Am I going to tell somebody, am I going to tell our audience that it's going to take them a certain number of days in order to change? No, because it may only take a matter of minutes. It could take a matter of days. It could take a matter of years. It could take forever, and it could take that some people never change. So how fast do you want to change aspects of your life? Today, everyone is uh, that I'm around so busy, and they're under so much stress. There was another uh, chapter in your book that talked about time management, and I just wonder if you could tell us some more about that and how, how we will use your program to help with our time management. Could time management have anything to do with stress? <laughs> <laughs> You're not kidding. It. Everything. And, and we all, it seems like, are saying, you know, I need more time. Dr. Hans Selye, he said that stress is a do-it-yourself program. And I know that when I first heard that, I thought, you know, I really don't need to hear that. <laughs> and yet he is so accurate. He is so on target. And what does he mean, or at least the way I interpret that, is that stress is a do-it-yourself program because – what creates and causes the stress? It's a lot of things. It could be not managing your time very well. And it also could certainly be not managing your self-talk very well. So what kind of a time manager do you see yourself as right now? And start to listen to your own self-talk. Have you been saying things like, gee, I've got so much stuff to do and so little time to get it done? I know I was working with one client, and, and a young lady came up, and she said, you know, I can work better under stress. I can work better under deadlines. And I said, well, that's good, but how does that affect the other employees in your workplace? And she said, oh, my goodness. She said, they have told me that I cause a lot of stress to them. So what we want to do is to start to think about what kind of beliefs and attitudes have we developed, consciously or subconsciously, about time, about being a time manager, uh, allowing people to steal time from us, and how, what are the attitudes and the beliefs that we have about stress? And all of a sudden, you know, you've got to be so careful because you, you that's why I was saying, be careful what you're watching on television, what you're listening to on the radio. There's a lot of, of songs, and you listen to them, and what are they, they talking about? 
Mm. All right, relationships and how terrible they are, and <laughs> uh, just all kinds of things. Same yeah. thing with with sitcoms and with different television programs. So you want to make sure that you're watching and listening to and allowing in to your consciousness the things that are going to help you to be a better time manager and help you to also be able to handle stress effectively. Mm. Well, speaking of time, we don't have a lot of time left, and I was just wondering if there's any final advice you'd like to give to the listeners? Deborah, I would love for each listener to give themselves permission to dream and to start to think, all right, could Dr. Will be accurate in what he's saying? And I truly believe that if they will read our book, read the workbook, and, and it's interactive, it's, I tell you, if you just buy the book and the workbook and expect miracles, it ain't going to happen. But if you will do everything that I suggest in the book and the workbook and allow yourself to dream and make sure that nobody comes along and tries to steal those dreams away from you, then I truly believe that you will see change in your life and it will be so amazingly fast and simple. Well, Dr. Will, I really appreciate the time you've given us today and all of your answers to my many questions. Thank you so much. Deborah, thank you. And for our listeners, if you want to purchase the book, The Power of Self-Talk, 15 Days to Change Your Life, and the image analysis workbook that Dr. Will and I discussed today, please go to www.jimwillphd.com. Thank you so much for listening. This has been Spotlight, conversations with the famous and influential from around the globe. Be sure to join us next week when we shine the spotlight on another interesting personality. Until then, this is Eric Chase. Thanks for listening.